Cannington, it's so good to be with you this morning and I feel quite at home because I thought the people that are on this platform this morning belong to the platform at the Rocks Baldivis. They've been there quite often recently. It's so good to be here and uh, I want to talk to you this morning uh, about the fact that often, I don't know about you, but I have seasons in my life where I have too much activity going on and not enough time to do it. And I just want to say, if life is like an A4 piece of paper, when my seasons get like that, I have scribble of activities all over the page and it spills off over the edges because I have no margin. And I think about my friend uh, Graham. He was supposed to be, he was rostered on, on El Vanto uh, to do car park this morning at the Rocks Baldivis and he was looking so forward for the very first time to where his rocks high vis and direct traffic. But he won't be doing it because he sold his property uh, a couple of weeks ago and he's got to get off that property and he's got so much junk. And so yesterday he did a, a trip to the city council tip with his large trailer of junk to get rid of it and went all by himself, stood on the back of his trailer, reversed in and there's a drop of two metres from the ground where his trailer is parked on. So if he falls off that trailer, that's a drop of three metres. He stood too close to the edge and he fell down onto the concrete three metres. He's in Fiona Stanley right now as we speak having a procedure to fix up a shattered hip. He'll have been steel pins put in that uh, to get him right again. And I don't think he'll be doing the car park roster for a while. I want to talk to you about margin. Graham left no margin. Maybe should have stayed back a metre or so from there. I think he will in the future if he ever gets back there. You need margin. And I want to uh, uh, give you some definitions of margin. Margin is the edge. Uh, margin is the border. Margin is the blank space that you need in your life. Margin financially is profit. Uh, margin is room to move. Uh, margin is time to relax. And I think we all need that from time to time. Uh, Rick Warren is the senior pastor of uh, Saddleback Community Church in California. Uh, he talks to us about how in Western society we have so cluttered up our lives in the last hundred years or so and we're in a place where that margin has been eroded. He says people now sleep two and a half hours less each night compared to people 100 years ago. And I, I'd, I'd like to get that two and a half hours back and, and I think some of you would too. He says the average work week is longer now than it was in the 1960s, stretching the hours that we work. He said the average office worker has 36 hours of work piled up on his or her desk and it takes three hours a week just to sort through it and find out what we actually need. He says uh, we spend eight hours of our lives, uh, eight, eight months of our lives opening junk mail and if you thought that was just the snail mail, that's electronic mail also. Eight months of our lives we spend doing that. He says we spend two years of our lives uh, playing phone tag with people uh, who, who are too busy to answer. Keep on calling, keep on calling. We spend five years of our lives waiting for people who are trying to do too much and are too late for appointments and too late for meetings. He said, it seems that we are a piled on, stretched to the limit society, society, chronically rushed and crushed, chronically late, chronically exhausted. And Job expressed this well in his day. This is what Job said, Job 3.26. He says, I have no peace. I have no quiet. I have no rest. And trouble keeps on coming. Troubles, troubles. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. I don't. I don't. 
We can't change yesterday. But in the name of Jesus and by the wisdom that he gives us, we can change tomorrow and we can build margin and have the, the space that he wants us to have. Those who, 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 there are those who live with margin and those who are marginless. Uh, Dr. Uh, Richard Swenson, I went to one of his seminars some years ago and he writes about margin. He says, you need margin in your life when you're not hurrying, when you're not worrying all the time, and you actually have time to think, wouldn't that be good? A time to relax and time to enjoy life and time to be still before God. And perhaps God wrote this through the psalm, psalmist, Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I, I believe that God said that to a people uh, that had no margin. I believe he's saying that to us today to enable us to be still and know that he is God and get some margin back in our lives. Richard, Dr. Richard Swenson also said of margin, you want to take this one home with you, margin is the space between my load and my limits, and you need that space. Marginless is, is exhaustion. Margin is having some money left, financially margin is having some money left before payday, that's cool. Uh, margin less is being broke for several days before payday. Margin is energy. Margin less is fatigue. Margin is calm. Margin less is hurry. Margin is security. Margin less is the disease of our day. Listen to this about margin. Margin brings peace. Margin brings better health. Graham would be saying that today in Fiona Stanley waiting for the procedure. Margin brings better health. Margin brings stronger relationships. Uh, margin brings more availability to God for him to use in a, in a, a creative and productive way in your life. Uh, margin brings time uh, for relaxation and creative thinking. So, big question is if we're short on supply of margin, what is it that erodes margin? Uh, well, financially, spending more than we earn, yeah? Uh, and this is what it says in your Bible. Proverbs 22, verse 7. It says, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. So when you're spending more than you earn, you are marginless. In fact, you're broke, and it's not a good story. So what erodes margin? Spending more than you earn, number one. Number two, too many activities. Even for those of you who believe that you can multitask, in fact, uh, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, who writes about these things, says that's a myth anyway, that no one can multitask. Got to keep your eye on the ball. She says multitasking is a myth. And if you try it, it's not good for your mental health, talking about are you okay? And creative patterns of flightiness and lack of concentration will result. So how many activities do you need? That's a question for you to think about and analyze. Uh, how many projects do you really need to be doing at the one time? How many activities do your kids need, parents? That's something for you to think about and work out with them. Number three, what erodes margin? Too much time in your neighbor's house. In case you don't believe it, take this proverb home with you. Proverbs 25 and verse 17. Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house too much of you and they will hate you. Oh, not you perhaps, but the other person that's there too often, right? Too much time in your neighbor's house. Uh, that could erode your margin. Number, th number, number four, what erodes margin? Too much time spent on social media. And so how much time is too much time on social media when it erodes your margin? Hashtag too many hashtags. How much time do you need to spend? Allow for margin in my life to be who I really am, who, crea who God created me to be. So number, uh, let's, let's build margin, let's protect margin. So how are we going to do that? Well, let me give you this one for a starter. Number one, allow for disruptions and plan for contingencies. That is, some things just may go wrong. So, for instance, if I'm doing a trip from Baldivis to Cannington, which I seem to be doing a couple of times a week, I did one this morning, I, I've got to work out how long it's going to take, 
and I've got to work out how long it's going to take on a Tuesday compared to how long it's going to take on a Sunday. And so when I left at 7 this morning to be here for a 7.40 appointment right here, I uh, actually didn't leave till just a few minutes after 7. I uh, dropped my wife off at another venue and I said, I've got to go, I'm preaching on margin, I need some margin, otherwise I'm violating the very principles I'm starting with before I even got started. I had a good run up the road this morning, I've got to tell you. I got here on time. Try that on a Tuesday. Try to get here in 33 minutes on a Tuesday from Valdivis. It's not going to happen. You've got to allow for the contingencies and the things that might happen that might slow you down. Ephesians 5.16 says... Uh, in, in the Amplified, make the most of your time. Uh, your New Testament originally was written in Greek, and there are two words that are translated time uh, in, your, in your New Testament. Uh, one is from the Greek word chronos, from which you get the word chronological, and you know what that means, that's to do with diaries and calendars and stuff like that, timelines. And the other one is kairos, which means opportunity. The one that's used here in Ephesians 5.16 is the kairos one, the opportunity. So make the most of your opportunities, and you can't if you have no margin. And so if your starting time for the appointment at Cannington is 7.40, uh, Gordon, you need to leave a little bit before 7 to make sure you get here. You won't always get the good run that you got this morning, so you allow for margin. And, and so, well, I, I have an appointment and I'm often late. Well, you need to leave earlier. You say, well, that would mean that I need to start earlier. Yeah, yeah, perhaps you need to get out of bed earlier. So, well, I don't want to because I went to bed too late last night. Perhaps you need to go to bed earlier to get out earlier, to leave earlier, to be on the right time. Here's a proverb for you. It's, it's not in your Bible. One my father taught me long ago. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a person healthy, wealthy, and what? Wise. You knew that one already. Isn't that so cool? Well, how do I build and protect my margins? Accept my human limitations. I heard it this morning... I saw, it on the, I saw it on the fence line, I saw it on the signs, I left the Baldavis campus, I saw it there, and there'll be more signs out saying it again, no perfect people allowed, uh, because none of us is perfect, we all have limitations, except that you have limitations. You can't fit in everything that perhaps you might want to try to fit in, and so you need to understand that, Job 14 verse 5, a person's days are determined... Lord, you have decreed the number of his months and have set the limits that he cannot exceed. So while it's talking firstly, primarily about your lifetime, God's given you a whole lot from the day that you're born till the day you check out of this life. It's talking about that primarily, but it's also talking about what you can fit in in any given month or any given year. And uh, supermen and superwomen of the Rocks Cannington, you have limitations, even though you're supermen, superwomen, because you have kind of like emotional kryptonite to slow you down. We all do, so that we can't fit everything in at all. And so sometimes what we need to say, people, is, is a take-home for you today. Sometimes you need to say no. Someone will have a plan for you. God loves you and everyone else has a perfect plan for your life. Uh, and, and you need to know what God's perfect plan for your life is, and it may be a good offer, a good opportunity, or a good thing to do, but you cannot do everything, so sometimes you have to say no. You need to figure out what you're going to say no to so you maintain the margin in your life and don't have it eroded by everyone else's expectations of you. Otherwise, this song will be true of you. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying just to keep my head Keep your head, people, keep your head. You can't do it all. So work out what you can do without eroding your margin and stay within the limits. How do I build and protect my margin? Acknowledge your real priorities before God. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you as well. If you read the whole chapter... He talks about what all the other things are. They're good things. They're like food and drink and coffee and clothes and stuff. He says, but if you put them as the 
top priority, you're going to mess the margin up. Seek first God and his kingdom and his righteousness and, uh, and all these other things will be given to you. This is a matter of faith. God's saying, trust me to give them to you. He's trying to strive after them. I want to give them to you. I want you to put me first and uh, then I'm going to make sure you get the things that you actually need. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. How do I protect uh, and build margin? Adjust your plans to God's directions. Proverbs 16, 9. In their hearts, humans plan their course. We all do. That's only half the proverb, though. But the Lord establishes their steps. You, 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 you need to make your plans and set your goals. But you need to understand that God is establishing your steps so you want to, don't want to be working counter to what God is doing with your life. You want to be cooperating with God, even collaborating with God. You go, God, so what is it you've got for me? I want to, I want to work with what you've got for me. I don't want to be doing my thing if it's independent and opposed to what you're doing for me, so I want to work with you. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. We need to be working with God. And so here's how we work with God. We need to stay in touch with him by his word and through prayer. Uh, it's, it's in, uh, it's in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 that it says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, and we need to be taught, uh, for rebuking, we need to be corrected, otherwise we might go the wrong way and step out of the margin, be like Graham, fall over onto the concrete and break our hips or something worse. Uh, we need to stay in touch with God. Rebuke, correcting, and training in righteousness uh, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for what? Every good work. We need to be praying. Now, here's the problem. Uh, a lot of people get this, particularly churchgoers and Christians. They go, yeah, I know that. I know that. I just haven't had time today, so I'm going to scribble it in the margin. Don't scribble attention to God's Word in the margin. Uh, attention to God's Word ought to be front and center of your life. If it's a A4 page of your life, it's in the middle. Uh, because God wants you to leave a margin because what He wants to do with that margin for you, He wants to, the gentle whisper of God's voice into the margin of your life. And not only will you be reading what His Word says, He'll be going to be whispering to you in the margin on those beautiful little things that you need to hear to get it right so that you have the margin uh, with God's voice in the margin. And prayer. Uh, I love this because it's so simple. Take this one home with you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray what? Continually. I don't know if you can break that down anymore. Just mean pray all the time. You, you don't have to wait for a, a prayer meeting. You just pray all the time when you've kind of uh, cheated your margin a little bit, when you left Baldivis and have to get here for a 740, and, and you're, you're praying. You're praying up the Quinana Freeway. Lord, let there be, you know, those big semi-trailers coming up from Bunbury on my highway, Lord. Lord, get me safely to the row. I want to turn down the row. And when I get in the row, I don't want any of those trucks stopping me there. Thank you, Lord. I'm praying all the way. It's all going good. I'm on cruise control, man, and I'm still going. And I'm going to Kenwick Link. Bring me out at Kenwick Link and get me to Albany Highway, Lord. Oh, there's the carousel. I'm about to turn right. I'm nearly here. Thank you, Lord. I prayed all the way. Pray continually, all the time, yeah? And here's a little pattern for us, by the way. Early to bed, early to rise, people. Mark 1.35, this is Jesus' pattern for prayer. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed very early in the morning. But I had a late night last night, Lord. He said, me, me too, but very early in the morning. While it's still dark, get up, make the most, start your day well, start with prayer. That's the model that Jesus gives us, yeah? How, how do I build and protect margin? One more for you, one more for you. We're getting close now. Worship. And when we talk about worship, you know, you as the individual, you can worship God wherever you are, whatever you're doing, wherever you're working, wherever you're studying, whatever it is you're doing, you can worship God. But there's something very, very important and spectacular about gathering together at the 10.30, coming here uh, to, to, to the Rocks Cannington. I said the Rocks Bell Times, I'll be practicing. Uh, we're in Cannington, right? Uh, the Rocks Cannington. And, and gathering yeah. for worship. 
And, and, uh, and, and your Bible's got something to say about that. Yeah? L l let me tell you. Let me tell you what it says. This is what it says. Uh, and, and, uh, just before I get there, uh, what you're thinking is, you know, I finally got the weekend off. And now you want me to come to church? You talk about margin, Gordon. I'm that close. I could be Graham going right over the edge, break my hip. And you want me to come to church? Man, the weekend's nearly gone and I'm thinking tomorrow. Yeah, you coached us. Don't think about yesterday, think about tomorrow. Well, I'm thinking about it. I'm back at work tomorrow. And now you got me here to listen to this. That's what you've done. Listen to what it says here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Listen to this, listen to it. But encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day, capital D, the day of Jesus approaching. Let's not give up meeting together. CEV says meeting for worship. I love the GWT. It says gathering for worship. Here at the Rocks, we, <laughs> this, is so, this is so profound. We refer to our gatherings as gatherings. And that's what the word says. Uh, that's, that's what the translation says. That's the literal meaning of the word. And implicit in our understanding of the gatherings, even explicitly so in this particular scripture, we come here to sing the songs and we love to sing the songs and get energized as we reach out to God and receive from Him. But we also come to encourage one another. And for someone in this house this morning, someone is going to encourage you before you leave. And it's going to be the word that you needed as you get ready to finish the weekend and get ready to start the work a day week. And so this morning, you know, I just want to tell you that the gathering here on Sundays, whichever one you come to, and maybe some of you are coming to the, the midday one next week and stay for the Father's Day because we're back to the 12 o'clock one. They, 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 they took pity of me today and said, you just need to do two, Gordon. But next week, Pastor D is back and he'll be doing three. So take, take it easy on him down at Bell Davis. No, we're working him tonight, so that's, that's another story. By the gathering... That doesn't erode your margin. That increases your margin. Uh, th that, that builds your margin. That makes your margin bigger because someone is going to give you a word of encouragement right here today before you leave. My prayer today is that your margin will be increased. Where it's been eroded and minimized and depleted, today will be fulfilled because you'll know about prayer and the word and you'll know about the word of encouragement. W w would you apply Jesus and his principles? Your margin will not just be protected, it will be enlarged and enriched. Would you stand with me, church? I want to pray for you this morning. And Father God, thank you so much for your word. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave your life for us and you said to us your disciples I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly we seek that abundant life in Jesus name this morning that our margins may be enlarged and enriched thank you Father God that we'll have that space to be creative to relax to enjoy and this morning Father touch our hearts touch our lives and enlarge us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Uh, people, I'm going to dismiss us with a blessing this morning. Just before I do that, I want to remind you that we do have prayers to pray for you. We're we'll standing up here. If you're needing prayer this morning, you come forward for prayer once I've given this blessing. Would you stretch out your hands to receive uh, this blessing this morning? It's, it's a blessing that kind of intersects with our message this morning, it's a blessing that gives you the space that God wants you to have. Here we go. May God reach down from on high and take hold of you and draw you out of deep waters. May he rescue you from the troubles and difficulties that confront you. May the Lord be your support 
May he bring you to a spacious place and rescue you because he delights in you. Amen. Amen. See you in the cafe shortly.